Welcome to Season 7 of our Legends mod series. I do hope you enjoyed our last season with the amazing party of Beast Slayers that slayed the Ijirok and many, many more monsters. Uh, this season, though, we're pushing the boundaries once again by upping the difficulty and the playstyle. Our goal is to make Barbarians great again. This will be an evil campaign, and we are finally playing on the most recent patch, 15.0.1.4. It says .3 there, but it's always wrong. Uh, we're also playing with patch 1.1 as well, so the most recent updates, uh, which has been out for a while, but we just haven't been able to get into it because of the whole longevity of the last season. So a lot has changed from last season to this season in terms of gameplay, perks, uh, a lot of things have been tweaked and fixed, and some things have been removed, and some things are good, some things are bad, but we'll get through it all as we get throughout the series, and as I remember to mention things and notice things. But, let's get started. We're doing the Northern Raiders Origin. It is my favorite starting origin. I believe it is the most fun, the easiest, and it gives you a lot of versatility, and it really helps you in the early game. Mainly because you're starting with three experienced barbarians and a and a monk that doesn't really do much. But the three experienced barbarians are level three, and they have decent armor and decent weapons on them. So it really just jump starts your early game. You don't have to worry about dying to rabble and stuff, usually. Maybe maybe these days. But yeah, it's it's something that I really recommend if you don't like the other starts. Maybe some of them are like super overpowered, like Adventuring Party and all that. But as a basic two-star difficulty start, Northern Raiders are good. You also have an increased chance of hiring, or finding in the hiring screen, some Barbarians, uh, Berserkers, Killers, and Assassins, which is nice, because those are some pretty decent backgrounds. It's going to be hard to find them, obviously, because it says increased chance, but that just means you have a really low chance of finding them. Uh, there is a chance. Uh, so nothing crazy about that, but if we do find one, we're going to be very happy. Uh, but the most important thing about this entire background that basically survives you even into late game is the Pillager ability. I think this is one of the strongest abilities of any origin start. The fact that you have a higher chance of getting any items from slain enemies as loot is just way too strong. And if you're struggling to get good loot in this game, if daggering down enemies is just not giving you enough rewards, take this background origin start because it's just insane. You can break somebody's armor down to zero durability and still get it as a reward. It's so crazy. Um, so I definitely love that ability. There is the... We also start with perks for hunting civilians. Uh, that means we get the caravan as a favored enemy, but we don't get it for free, so it's it's not great, but we have the option of taking it, and we're most likely going to take it, because that's what we're going to be doing. But it's not like we get it for free. Uh, the negatives of this origin aren't too bad. You do get bad relations to most human factions, which means you get at least one or two enemy factions that hate your guts and will attack you on sight. So it's it's really annoying and it can limit the map for you depending on what map you're on. But for us, we're going to make use of that by just hunting civilians for free and having them hate us anyways. But the most detrimental uh, perk to this origin is the fact that only outlaws are keen to work for you. Meaning you can only recruit evil backgrounds. That's not a bad thing thematically for us, because we're going to be barbarians, we're going to try and be evil. But it's really going to limit our recruit pool, we're not going to be able to get nobles or any really cool backgrounds like that. We're probably not going to be able to get hunters as well. And we're just going to have to make do with what we have. We can, we can do it, it's just going to be a little bit more tricky. And that's the only real downside to the background, uh, to the origin. But yeah, the whole the whole thematics behind this is we're barbarians that are trying to convert to being good people. But we we're going to go right to being bad people. <laughs> now, with the late game crisis, I was tossing up between green skin invasion and nobles at war, but for the thematics and for the fun of it, I thought nobles at war might be more fun so we get to terrorize the low class of society and the higher class of society at the same time and get paid for it too. So, that'll be fun. Uh, with the seed, we did scout ourselves a seed beforehand, 
Nothing too crazy, but something to get us started because you can get really unlucky with some seeds. You get some really like cocky brothers or aggressive brothers that just ruin them completely. And you'll understand why we went for a seed in this next little bit. Because we are upping the difficulty because of popular request. You guys have decided that it's a good idea for me to go in to do Legendary. Uh, I don't know if I fully agree with that, but <laughs> we're gonna do it anyways. Uh, Legendary difficulty is a part of the Legends mod, it's not found in the original game. And there's a reason as to why I've avoided it for so long. Because all the other difficulties just work on enemy scaling. So exponential for expert, you got linear for veteran, and 25% less scaling for your brothers. So it's just based on how strong your brothers are, bases how strong the enemies are, yada yada yada. Um, Legendary goes beyond and decides that you can have like exponential scaling and, as the description says, they get extra perks and abilities basically. So zombies with poisonous bite, orcs get battle forged, barbarians get overwhelm, Goblins with Crippling Strikes, Thugs, which are Brigands, give Backstabber and Underdog, Vampires get Fearsome, and Storms get Colossus. It's... and that's that's just a very small list of what is actually added to the Legendary difficulty. There are so many more perks that are given out to other enemies as well. So, we'll get to experience the pain and suffering of all the enemies' upgrades, and you guys will get to see how that affects uh, are ways of killing them, because some of them just might not die. <laughs> but we'll see how that goes. But in order to not shoot ourselves in the feet completely, there's no way I'm ever changing the economy difficulty and the funds from high down to none or beginner to legendary. Uh, I just don't see the enjoyment of it. I, I can see it in terms of like super hardcore, but when you get to legendary economy, 10% heal rate and repair rate outside of camping is just rough. It is. Like, 10% sale rate buyment, 50% less recruits. It's it's just gonna make you spend 30 days to do something that could have taken you 10 days, or something even crazier than that. And it's just a... it's gonna drag out your games way too long, and it's gonna ruin your enjoyment factor. Unless you're super hardcore, then go for it. Um, same with the starting funds, your stash gets completely decimated and your stash of ammo, meds, armor, and money, it's just, it's just horrible. So I don't recommend touching these ones. Maybe play with beginner, veteran, expert, maybe legendary if you're crazy like I am at the moment. But yeah, that's something I wouldn't recommend. Anyways, in terms of map settings, we're going to use our decked out citadels as usual with trade buildings because I don't see any other way to do it. If you're missing buildings on the map, you're just going to run out of uh, options for certain characters or certain commodities as well. But yeah, we're upping the factions to 5 and settlements to 40. We're populating the map really, really strong, mainly because our gameplay is going to be revolving around cities. We're going to be fighting tr uh, peasants and all that, so we need more cities to create more peasants to, you know, fight them. So having a nice populous map is very good for us. The only thing we've tweaked on top of that is we've reduced the landmass ratio from 50 to 40. Just to give us a few more docks on the map, a little bit more water, gives us more transportation. But other than that, can't play with too many of these settings or else the game crashes and hates you. But that was just enough. Anyways, finally on the optional mod settings, you can see the screen if you guys are used to seeing the screen from previous seasons. The There's a few things missing. And it's very sad to see that the world magic, worldwide magic, is gone. Which is such a sad sight, and I hope they do bring it back soon. Theranthropy is still not fixed, so it's not available as well. And so we're not going to have any werewolves, and we're not going to have anybody who just randomly gets necromancer abilities, or Vala abilities, or randomly gets magic missile. So it's very sad to see that, but we'll survive. Now, because we're going Legendary Difficulty, I've turned Distance Scaling off, because that's crazy. If we ever need to go to the Wilderness, we don't want to be mobbed by 10 behemoths at once. So that's something I don't want to happen in case we need to go wandering. 
Uh, recruit scaling is on just in case the late game we struggle on losing brothers here and there so we can get a little bit of a bounce back. I don't think recruit scaling is very strong, especially if you don't have the money for it, it's kind of annoying. But if we have the money, it'll be fine. Dynamic perks, layered armor, equipment scaling, uh, and all the rest, just the usual, is going to be good enough. And I think with that, we just might as well get into it. Let's go. Welcome to the Northern Raiders start. Basically, we killed half a village, technically. Uh, stole all their stuff, had a monk convince us to go straight, and he joined us because we told him to. Uh, but unfortunately, he doesn't realize that we are going to go straight back to pillaging. <laughs> yeah, we're not, we have no intentions of being good guys. Uh, let's welcome you to the map to start us off. Uh, we have a very nice sized map with a couple of factions that hate our guts. We got the green ones hating us and the yellow ones. They definitely will attack us on site, so we gotta be careful. Now, the black faction and the white faction are friendly to us because they don't know us unfortunate to them, but we are still going to be friends with them. Uh, we don't need everyone in the world to hate us, we've got to have some sort of income, some sort of place to recruit new people. Uh, as you can see, the white faction is pretty gigantic, and the southern uh, nations are doing well as well. Uh, because we increased the water, you can now see that we've got some really nice harbors along the side of the map. And the best part is, as well, the southern nations here, southern city-states, have harbors on these two cities as well. So late game travel is going to be very nice. And as long as we're happy with these two nations, we can bully these ones as much as we want. And the cool thing is, there's a harbor right up here in the corner, which we might be able to use. I'm not sure if it's connected, but hopefully it is to the others. But before we get into it, let's show off what we have on this seed as well in terms of people. Nothing too crazy, but at least we didn't get any negative traits for our brothers. That's the main reason I went a little bit on the hunty side. We got ourselves 10 resolve with nobles, 10 resolve in battle, so we got some nice resolve on our barbarians. We got iron lungs and bloodthirsty, which is also very, very nice. Uh, drunk and fearless on the next one. Drunk is not great, but we have the option of losing it later on if we get the lucky event to break it off of this guy. So we won't have to worry about that negative 5 melee skill sometime in the future, whenever that happens. Our monk is completely garbage, as usual, but at least he's bright and is tiny to sort of help keep him alive. We'll go into the leveling up just to get this one of them all ready up. This is the tankier version. Whenever you do this origin, you always have two brothers that are a bit more aggressive. They've got a bit more melee skill. And the third one always has more melee defense. Now, one cool thing is there's an integrated mod with the new updates. It's called the Vazel's Veteran Ranges. It's basically a projection of the character's based attribute ranges. Uh, if they were to get to level 11, if you put all the effort into one of these skills. So basically, if we put all of our effort into the attack of this defensive brother, there's a chance he'll be somewhere between the ranges of 83 to 93 melee attack. Due to RNG and all of that. Because he might roll a 2, he might roll a 3. But for his defense, he's guaranteed to be 35 if we put every level into defense. So that's what we're going to do, obviously. But we're still going to keep him as an aggressive brother, because 35 defense isn't enough to make him an amazing tank. So late game he'll fall off if we make him a tank, so we'll make him just damage. Uh, the other cool thing is the Iron Lungs guy has a guaranteed 97 attack. And the other one has a guaranteed 93. So we've got some pretty decent starting brothers, but this is pretty standard. I don't think there's too many different variations in terms of melee skill and um, defense with this origin. Now let's quickly get their levels into where they need to be. We're just going with health melee attack and melee defense because their resolve is nice for every single one of them. Going into health and steel brow for the tank. Uh, this guy's really cool. Uh, because he has iron lungs, I did some calculations and found out that with iron lungs and rebound, he has enough fatigue with the reduction of two-handed sword mastery 
To become a two-handed sword person that can use the special abilities, the sweep attack and the split every single turn as long as he doesn't move from the square he's in, because that costs 23 and he regenerates 23 every turn when he's at maximum fatigue, which is really cool. So you don't even have to make him mind over body for him to work well as a two-handed sword. Oh, I do need to rename them, that's right. Uh, so two-handed sword, sword, there we are. Uh, lungs, because he's not going to be mind over body. We've got our uh, tanky. Is it two-handed sword tanky? Yeah, two-handed tanky. He's not going to be sword, though. And then this one's just a 2H something. Uh, but yeah, this guy's going to be really cool. Two-handed sword with lungs is going to be a new build for us. We're going to have to try and reinvent the wheel a little bit with our builds because of the new patch, all the changes to perks, and because legendary difficulty means you need to sort of play around your builds a little bit differently because of how the enemies have their perks. Nimble, Battleforge, all that crazy stuff. So we might lean heavily into hammers and stuff this episode, uh, this season. And maybe into two-handed axes and stuff. Just go crazy in damage. Uh, sadly, we have to do a bad perk early on for this build. Because uh, that's the only really good perk he has to help with his two-handed sword. But it cripples him early, so hopefully that doesn't be a problem. Uh, two-handed sword, we're still... Not two-handed sword, I keep saying that. Two-hander still needs... Attack, defense, and health. I gotta stop clicking that wrong. There we go. The other cool thing is we start off with a dog. Uh, that's gonna help us in our first fight, and if he survives the first fight, a few fights after that. Uh, we're gonna go risky and go student into Colossus here. Hoping for the late game. We start off with some nice armor and some nice weapons. As you can see, 65, 65, 35, 75, and 150 and 95. Uh, we'll switch out these just to even up that 35, because that's way too low, and put it up to a 75. Uh, because we like the two-headed guy a little bit better, not like we have favorites, but this girl can uh, have a bit more defense, so she doesn't need as much armor. Although it's not that much more defense. But we'll switch out this as well. Because a 15 base is pretty crappy. So we start off with really bad crappy base armor. Base helmets and stuff. But we'll get there soon. I'll put on the bandages. A bit of silverware to pay our way out. And a bit of food to start ourselves off. But yeah, that's basically it as the start. So we're going to go straight back to pillaging. And we're going to bully this village. We're going to have to wait for a caravan or a bunch of peasants to... There we go pop out of the village, basically. Because uh, when you're at smaller villages, it's a lot easier to attack them. Especially the starting village that you start at. Super easy to just attack at day one. So we're going to go on a murder spree. And beat up some peasants. Now the minstrel's not something scary. But in a second you'll realize as to why I wish it was a trading caravan and not peasants. But you'll notice that in just a bit once I get to where we need to be. There we go. Let's stay on the road just to make our lives a little easier for movement-wise. Oh, Pitchfork. That's going to be tough. That's the hardest enemy on the map at the moment. But here, let me show you something cool. Uh, peasants have Nimble. I mean... Did I say cool? I should have said painful, and suffering, and horrible, and evil, and legendary difficulty. Why? Why do peasants get nimble out of all the things? The minstrel doesn't, and any other support characters that are in sort of these types of parties don't. But why peasants? The Peasants are meant to be easy to kill. This means it's a wet noodle fight. They take like five hits to die. Which means we take, I mean, we take more than five hits to die, unless it's like the pitchfork or the, the pickaxe. But, oh, this is, this is going to be a big wet noodle fight, and I hope we win. Now, how are we going to do this? We should wait, because I want them to move to us. Good, they move to us. 
Now at the end of the round, if we put the dog down, he'll get two... Oh, goodness, I wanted to surround them. Okay, so we'll just go for the attacks. And as you can see, we did 14 damage. And we missed. We did another, like... what? How's, what's that? 19 damage? On a weapon that can do, like, up to 60 damage? <laughs> it's so stupid. Like, we could have just one-shot this peasant. But he takes, like, four hits to die. Oh, and the minstrel's healing him, too. Oh, great. Like, we needed that. Okay, we'll pop out the dog, because that desperately needs to help us out. Am I worried about the cleaver, or am I worried about the pick? The pick's gonna ruin our armor, and the dog's gonna help us with that, and we miss it anyways. So please, kill him. Like, slowly. The monk in your first fight will never, ever be able to do anything. Unless you buy him some gear from a shop. So, that's why we're leaving him over there. Okay, yes, cut arm sinew. Beautiful. The dog survives. The minstrel is still healing them. Oh, the pitchfork makes it misses. That's so good. That's the scariest thing on the map. The pickaxe is pretty scary as well. Uh, cut his head off. Yes! Yes, we got two hits. Uh, we need to kill this one. Yes! I was going to go for the pickaxe guy, but he's going to be harder to kill than this one. Dog, please kill him. Oh, close. Okay, the dog's surviving. That's good, that's good. Still getting your heels out. The pitchfork misses again! Oh, if we have a chance of getting this pitchfork, I really want a pitchfork. Early game, pitchforks are amazing. Who's scarier? He's easier to kill. He's scarier. I think we've done it. I don't want to celebrate too early, but with our armor situation, the minstrel's probably going to run away. And the pitchfork keeps missing. Oh my goodness, we had so much luck in this fight. Actually, I might chase down this minstrel. Because we still have the dog. No, the minstrel's gonna run. Dang it. And we're getting our butt kicked, so let's jump back into the fight. Uh, let's run them down just in case the dog can catch up. That minstrel's fast. No, I don't think the dog can catch up at all. Edge of the mouse right there. Yeah, there's no way. Well, that was very confusing, because that's not how that fight was meant to go. That was a lot easier because of how lucky we got. Uh, but it was a little bit of a wet noodle fight, as you could tell. <laughs> and look at that, we got an armor that is at 0%. So welcome to the overpowered ability of pillaging, where you just get free stuff from the enemy that you broke into zero pieces. That's literally tattered sackcloth that's got zero health on it on the ground, and we got it for free. And the pitchfork. We got the pitchfork. I am super happy about that. That means our monk can actually do something now in a fight. That's basically it. I mean, he's got 41 attacks, so... I might be speaking too soon on that. But at least he can do something. We're not going to repair these things because they're practically useless. But yeah, that was our first fight. Beating up peasants. We should be proud of ourselves. <laughs> Anyways, let's go and start terrorizing the villages of this... Wait, what? That's scary. No. No, 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 no. Where the heck did they come from? No, we're meant to be... Oh, we could... Maybe fight the caravan? I didn't realize they'd spawn a caravan that quickly. Uh, let's go beat up a caravan. I'm a little worried that it says caravan guard. Because caravan hands are strong enough. The caravan guard doesn't look fancier. Not by much. Oh, 
The other thing is the dog survived. That's amazing. Do they have any shields? It's just the one shield. And that is a boar spear, which is annoying, but it's not not the end of the world. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's only six of them against the three, technically the four of us. Let's go here. One, two, there. Let's go there. And there. As long as you don't step next to them, they won't do anything about it. Those guys running that way is very good for us, but I don't like the spear wall. Because that's going to hurt. We can try and risk the monk's life. I don't like the idea of it, but it's against a spear, so we should be okay. So we'll do a strategy that might work. We'll go here. Wait. Wait. See what happens. He brings out ranged wep- Oh, no. 10% didn't work. Okay, so that didn't work. Um, I think we need to collapse this position right now. percent uh, we'll go here and put the dog out nice the dog went for that guy break his shield we gotta break that shield oh the, the what the dog two shot him okay this is the reason why I like fighting caravans better than peasants uh, because caravans don't have nim nimble it's so stupid, caravans are easier to kill than peasants. Like, what is this? Like, that's- we two-shot him. He's basically dead. Broke his shield. Go for the 46 and we get the hit on the head. Oh, we don't want the dog to die. Please don't die, dog. Don't die. No, no, the dog. Okay, he bled out. That's amazing. Caravan guard. Oh, come on. Stop missing. The spear is going to hurt. Yep, called it. 69 for this one and 60 for him? Oh, my goodness. We rolled... Oh, we could have gotten the 66. Okay, he's dead. This guy's gonna die. Okay. What? They have Pathfinder? Oh, that's what they have? That's annoying. I was like, he can't move two spaces and attack. <sighs> but he can if he has Pathfinder. Oh, that's horrible. And we miss 262s. We get the 73. But he's dead. We just lost a guy. That is rough as heck. Oh, wow, we got the kill? I was not expecting that to do much damage. Okay, we're missing way too much here. Come on. Come on. The monk got a kill, which is really nice. He's on death's door, yet he's faster than us. Oh my goodness. Come on. Yes! Wow, we lost our two-hander so early. Vanquished? The most powerful opponent he vanquished was a peasant! Oh, that's... Oh, look at all that copper! And we got his armor back, and we got some new armor, new weapons, we got the boar spear on 3% health. I mean, for that kind of money, was that worth it? Maybe. Maybe not. We just lost a really good character that had a guaranteed 93. Maybe was not worth it. Okay, as a monk, what are you useful? Maybe a banner? 
Rally the troops, no recover. What the heck is this monk? He's useless. Well, we still have to go with fatigue into resolve regardless. And I guess health, just so he doesn't die. He can get up to 98 in terms of resolve. That plus the 25%. Plus the mind of her body. Plus he does get matching set. Which is actually really good for a character that doesn't attack. Fine, fine. We'll keep him around, see if he's actually half decent. Uh, let's take apart what we own. Because armor managing in the early game is just insanely vital. Okay, what's the best armors we got? We got 30s, right? Okay, and then the best attachment we have is 80. And there's no tier 1 attachments. Okay, well, so much for that. 65, 50. Okay, we'll take the 65. The monk can then get the 25 into the 50. In terms of helmets... We have 255s. We have a tier 2 and a tier 3. 10, 45. And there's also a tier 1 as well. But we split the tier 1 across just so everyone has equal... Okay, that looks way too funny. Let's do it the other way. Oh, I forgot you can have... T oh, yeah. They changed, uh, they got, like, a painter's tent and extra vanity stuff. So you can have two tier threes on your helmet, which is kind of weird, but it's cool. But it makes you look a lot cooler. Uh, okay, so for helmets, it's 105, 110. Armor is 95, armor is 110. Anything to repair? The helmets are perfect, that's fine. A 25 base with a 2 attachment, that's not too bad. The weapons... I don't think the axe hammer is better than the axe. 45 to 60, 0 to 20. The axe hammer is better? Ah, but the axe does the 50% on the head. And the axe hammer does always 10 regardless. I still think the always 10 regardless is better. Uh, but yeah, that's that's us at the moment. That's just the two of us left. And the barbarians are still chasing us. Uh, we need to do a nice big loop-de-loop -loop and get the heck out of here. So they stop chasing us. Our food's okay, we'll be fine. Let's go down this way. We still have friends to the south, so we can go shopping. Oh, yes! Ambitions! What are we going to do? Forge a bond of friendship with a town. Or get 2,000 crowns. I mean, bond with the town's usually the first choice. But are we going to make that many friends with towns as easily as we'd expect? Because we're not going to do that many quests. I think the 2,000 crowns is probably the right way to go. Because we need that banner. Also, we need to worry, is there any... Ooh, there's some footprints. How's our armor? How's our health? Ooh, we're a bit low. Let's not get into a fight. Oh, but that's so lucrative. Trading caravans are so freaking lucrative. No, we have to we have to be careful. We we lost a member. That's the main problem. It's another caravan. Oh. <laughs> oh, I can see this being so profitable for us. Okay, finally some friendly faces with witch hunters in town. That is cool. We can actually hire witch hunters. Even though they're not I guess they are outlawed. 
They're not really friendly. People don't like them. Hunters we can hire? Interesting. There's a lot of hirings that I didn't expect. Uh, brawlers. Oh yeah, there's been so many updates. Uh, I've had to update our database as well. Brawlers are now overpowered because they give you plus 21 stash. That's so stupid how that works. But the problem is they're still expensive, so they've just been more cost-effective these days. Cultists are pretty cool. Not sure what we need. I think a thief is a good choice. But that's a horrible thief. Peddler's gonna help us with our money, but we don't need that at the moment. The cultists are expensive. It's because they're wearing good armor. So maybe they're worth it. No. I mean, seductive and bloodthirsty is cool. But no stats. Three perks. Oh my goodness. Deathwish, Ironjaw, and Brute. That's actually really nice. But you've got no stats to speak of. Plus one in melee skills. Good. But is it good enough? Also, we need to check these brawlers out. They're expensive, but... Th oh my god, that's horrible. Aggressive's only good if you can make them into a polearm. Wow, I am insanely surprised at the three different traits that they can have. Double defense, one attack. 10% melee damage. Okay, this brawler's worth it. And he rolled a 56, which guarantees him 76 to 86. Nice. I like it. He gets unarmed training as well. This is really cool. This is new as well. You can focus on just being an unarmed person and just punch people. And actually does pretty decent damage if you have initiative. So it's kind of like doing a fencer build, but with no weapon. But because he has negative 20 initiative... I probably won't do it with this guy. And negative 10 as well on Hesitant. Damn, that's bad for a brawler in terms of going into unarmed builds. But he's got quick hands, he's got everything else he needs for a two-handed build. So, I mean, he also has a lot of stamina, too. Could definitely go into a duelist build. He's got recover, and he's got a lot. He even has rebound. Oh, what's the choice? Two-handers or one-handers? What's his weapon choices? Hammer. Sword, which we are not doing. And mace. Oh, we could also go spear. But duelist spear is weird. It doesn't work as well as you'd expect. Duelist hammer. I've never done it. And we could do it. Or in terms of two-handers, he could go two-handed hammer, two-handed polearm, but there's no clarity, so that's useless. Oh, he doesn't have clarity! That really ruins two-hander builds. Not ruins them, but it really suffers. And double strike is so nerfed. I am so devastated that double strike got insanely nerfed as it did. It's 20% extra damage instead of the 50% that we're used to. And at the end of the turn, it just disappears. It has to be during this turn. So you can't carry it over to next turn. Which, I mean, I did tell everybody that, you know, Double Strike was overpowered. And they nerfed it, so I guess I probably shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> uh, anyways, I think, yeah, he has to be a Duelist build. Me. I can't select all of it. Duelist, uh, hammer? Because we want to try out hammer this time. Mace is good because then you can stun people. But hammer's good against armor and it is guaranteed damage. That's the really cool thing that I love about hammers and I never really used it before. Is that one-handed hammers always inflict at least 10 damage to hit points regardless of armor. Which is really, really cool. So even if you're doing bad and you're only worrying about how much armor damage you do. You can just wreck people's armor and just constantly do free damage to their health. 
and never have to worry about rolling low, like rolling zeros. So 0 to 22 can ignore armor, but you always inflict at least 10 damage. So, yeah. It's nice. I don't think it's overpowered, but I think it's nice. So we have a new brother to join us. We'll give him his armor, we'll give him his axe, just to start him off. Oh yeah, we need to buy shields. Uh, how's the pricing for these iron ingots? The copper, sorry, copper ingots. That's a great price. That means we can sell the silver bowls at a really good price. Oh my goodness, we're rich. We can complete the first ambition today. Also, that's a nice spear. I think the axe is better. Yeah, the axe is better. But the spear is an optional thing for later. Uh, in terms of food, we're not going to run out of food anytime soon. That's a cheap war fork. Don't need it per se. That's a cool chain. Don't need it. Those are the only shields they have? No, I'm not gonna buy bucklers. Like, bucklers are useful, but I, they're not as useful as a bigger shield. Yeah, no, I can't justify buying a buckler. But I can now justify purchasing new guys with this kind of cash. We could even get, I mean, we already lost a good character, so we're not gonna spend that kind of money. But I am interested in this cultist. I'm just worried he's gonna roll crap on his stats. Colossus, he doesn't get recover, so he has to be a two-hander. Mind over body, balance, he doesn't have a defensive, he only has lies. That's pretty bad. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably not worth it. Fishmonger, maybe? As soon as I saw three stars, I was like, yeah, it's in range defense. No. <laughs> oh yeah, Night Owl got buffed. 15% extra skill during nighttime, and it has the usual night penalties, so Night Owl is actually useful now. But that's a horrible fishmonger. Uh, Apothecary... They have crap stats, usually. But they're great for medicine. If you get injuries and stuff on your team. I mean, for 44 bucks, what's this peddler got? Nothing. I'll probably kick myself. I mean, he's got good armor. Fine. Fine. If this turns out to be bad... Oh, he's got negative three defense. Oh, that's bad. He does get axe mastery. So I was talking a lot about how Brute's really good when you've got flails. And it is. It desperately is. Because you're going to constantly try and hit the head with the flail. But if you go for a headhunter build, axes are a bit better because they go 50% extra damage for the head. So this guy could be a flail that sits in the back. It's weird. I don't think he's that great. But if he sits as a reach weapon, it could work. Could even go matching set. Uh, backstabber for sure. Uh, this is a flail reach? Question mark? He also has polearm, but doesn't he get clarity, so that's useless. The flail reach is better. Because then he gets to whack people in the head constantly. And his, pros his prospects are really low. But he gets gifted, so that's not bad. And he gets backstabber, so it's it looks bad, but I think we can work with it as long as we ignore the fact that his defense is garbage. And he gets free 10 range defense, that's nice. So he doesn't get shot at as often. He can even get into some... He could be mind over body. Holy crap. That'd be pretty good. He just doesn't get any stars in the resolve. That's kind of rubbish, though. But using Flail with Mind Over Body is not a bad idea. 
Flail Reach, Mind Over Body. Because he'll go Attack, Resolve, and Health? He doesn't get Recover. Holy crap. Yeah, we have to go Mind Over Body. Okay. So that's a very weird build, but it's a really cool armor. <gasps> they upgraded it. They fixed it. Oh, the Cultist armor wasn't fixed ages ago, and it was never attachment. But now it is. 55... So that is a 50, so we'll upgrade that. The helmet is a... Oh, wow, that's actually really nerfed. Oh, the cultist hood used to be so good. Now it's garbage. That's unfortunate. But at least he's got his flail. Uh, his scythe, I mean. So this scythe can hit from the back ranks, which is really nice. It's just that he's got horrible attack at the moment. Okay, so building up the party is important. How are we going to do it from here? Let's see the quests. Worship a relic. Ooh, is this follow the tracks? No, that's clear an undead location. Nope. <laughs> I'm not in the mood to fight poisonous zombies. Follow the tracks, return the tone knowledge. For 250 bucks, uh, no. Because raiding caravans gives us a lot more money than that. I think we'll go up to Shrat. The Scat. Oh my goodness, I don't even know if I'm going to pronounce that right. Skahathium. Skahathium. Hopefully that's close to what it's pronounced. I've never seen that name before. Oh, that scared me. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, we have to be so freaking careful on the roads now because there's going to be patrolling people from different factions on the roads there's going to be mercenary companies that might come out to hunt us because they can actually do that if a, if a faction or a noble faction hates you a lot they can send mercenary parties after you and also now trading caravans are scary on the roads peasants aren't, no, the peasants are fine Oh, that did that gave me a little bit of a fright. Uh, find a location for free? Sure. We'll get a bit of money for that. Follow the tracks for that price? No. Secure the cemetery? No. Okay, so for a bit of money during the night, whilst we've got nothing to do, we're going northeast. Sharp Wild Wild. So it's somewhere around here. We're gonna get a little bit of money for finding a location. There it is, good. So let's head back, hopefully during the day, so we didn't just waste our entire day. Come on, come on, come on, come on, there we go. 20 experience, 230 crowns. Uh, what's this two star quest? A caravan? Oh, Wideberg, where's that? To the south. Now, in all honesty, south is a lot better than north, but that does get us a little close. Uh, let's consider that for later. Let's look at what's here. In terms of backgrounds, not great choices. But there is a lot of miners, which could roll well. No. Ooh, Dextrous is nice, but no stars. Okay, so let's ignore that one. Oh my goodness. What is that? That's almost triple stars all around. That's super rare. Triple fatigue, double defense. Triple range defense. Extra melee damage, no fatigue, extra health. That's not bad. Uh, let's go with the Apprentice, just to see, because Apprentices could be... <gasps> Plus two attack on our Apprentice with his Impatient. Mm. Maybe. Pragmatic got buffed. Pragmatic is now, in my opinion, one of the strongest perks. Uh, one of the strongest traits, sorry, I keep saying that wrong. Pragmatic, plus five in both skills... But negative 20% chance to hit the head is amazing. Like, it sounds bad, but if you're constantly hitting body shots, then you never have to accidentally hit the head. 
and waste a hit on an enemy. It just sucks that this miner sucks. Uh, but Pragmatic, I love it. And I love the, the sprites. The whole new icons that they've made is really, really cool. Uh, the monk we can try out just to see if he's got... Oh, that's really weird. That's a decent looking monk. Does he have Polar Mastery? Yeah, he does. How much money do we have? Do we have enough money to try out a monk? I mean, we'll try out this guy first, because I think... I think plus two defense. Oh, it's only... 33. Only he rolled higher. 65 to 85 is pretty good, but it's not good enough. Crazy's fatigue on a character that doesn't get fatigue, because Miner's fatigue sucks. No shield mastery. So how could he be useful? No clarity, because he could do pole arms, but he doesn't have clarity. Wow, that's such a waste of stats. He can get 44 to 54 range defense, which is crazy, but it's useless. Damn, that sucks. I don't think we can use him. He'll just die. And soak XP that we don't want soaked. Range skill of 51 to 71, no, that's still not worth it, because he couldn't do slings. Slings needs to be... Yeah, it's only plus 12. I was like, why is it saying plus 12 twice? Oh, because it's talking about sling staffs are being even buffed further. Which is nice. It's so nice to see they buff sling staffs. Because uh, I didn't think they were that strong before. One attack versus two. It's just not, not economic. But, yeah. It, I really want this guy to do well. But I don't think he can do it. That sucks. At least we get a little bit of stuff off of him. Okay, in terms of the next options, we're looking at the monk for 150 bucks. Yeah, okay. 41's not great. That guarantees a 71 attack. But with polearm and clarity, is that enough? Does he get back? He gets backstabber. That could be enough. He gets a lot of fatigue. Well, it's not a lot, it's enough. Enough fatigue. He gets rebound, he gets... No, the Thrustmaster only works on spears. It's not bad. We could keep him. 90% not to get killed. Iron Jaw so he doesn't get injured. I don't think he's great. But I think we could use him. Yeah, it's just sad. He's not going to do well. But for 150 bucks, we can get someone that won't be too bad. And I'm, I have high hopes for this apprentice. I do. That is very high hopes. And that is a good apprentice. I normally don't see apprentices roll that well. Apprentices usually roll pretty bad. But 53 is pretty good. Especially, actually 58. That's almost near max roll. Because he's actually got minus 10, 5 because of the drunkard. That apprentice is strong. He's got almost everything he needs. And he's going to be a two-hander, most likely, because... Yeah, he does... He doesn't get... Cla oh. No clarity. So maybe he's a one-hander. Hmm. Yeah, we could make him a duelist as well. Why are we getting so many duelists? Duelist as a hammer again, I guess? Or Duelist as an axe? No, he doesn't get bonus to hit the head, so axe is useless. So Duelist as a flail would be weird. So Duelist hammer. He does get Duelist. He gets Killing Frenzy. He gets Rebound, which is nice. Not necessary for a Duelist. But he could. Uh, student into Colossus, into Gifted, into... A lot of stuff. Okay. Another Hammer Duelist. And when he loses his Drunkard, he's going to be even stronger. I really like this. Uh, let's give him some armor. Let's give him the... Sp 
beer, I think, is probably the right choice. Or is the Scram Scrax better? The Scram Asax. Oh my goodness. Can't say things right. Uh, 39 to 45, 0 to 12 with 20% to hit. It's actually the same. Almost the same. But this has a higher chance to hit. Nice! That's actually a pretty good rounded party for the moment. We've used up all of our money. But in terms of a start, we can now hunt caravans a little bit more effectively. They're not selling any shields. Oh, how are you guys going to do this to us? Although they sell their pitchfork. For a very cheap price. Yeah, we do need another pitchfork. That is true. So we'll take a pitchfork. Uh, we'll give that to our monkey friend. Got a bit of clothes that we should give off to people. Very nice. We'll do it like that. Because the monks are a little bit weaker. Oh, why do I have this helmet that I should be giving to other people? 25, yep, yeah, okay. Very good, very good. Sure, you can wear the sash. No, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. The sash I've never found to be useful. Unless you're doing like a hardcore run that has no spaces. Then the sash will be super useful. Uh, base 20, base 25, that's nice. And that's with a base 30, I think. 35, oh my goodness, that's good. I think one of our front lines could definitely use that. Twenty-five, twenty-five. let's put that on these guys. And that actually looks half decent, except for helmets. Can we sort out our helmet problem? For a very cheap price, yes we can. That's way more expensive than the helmet that we just purchased. I like it, 15 armor for 15 bucks. And now they look really like monks. <laughs> All good. Now, there's not too much left for this episode, so we didn't really get too much done, but we did get ourselves grounded and sorted out. I think these are really nice as well. 30 base armors. I am not going to complain about free 30 base armors. That's a 35. We're happy with that. That's a 30. And I think this one was a 30 as well. Sweet. 25 can be switched out again. And that's another 25, which can be... Oh, that's already 25. Sweet. So, for armor, we're doing good. But it's the only thing we need. Helmets and uh, shields. We desperately need shields. So what could we sell? Oh, we could sell a couple of things. But more importantly, we need to go up here, because they're going to have shields. Uh, what can we waste the night away on? We can camp and maybe get some... Uh, what, food, I guess? And then sell the food? Uh, there's a bit of a tussle. The cultist and the monk. Oh, great. We had this so early on. Uh, they're gonna be upset, but who's gonna win? Who is going to win? The monk wins. Man is tempted by darkness. Oh, no, 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 the cultist one. Dang, fractured ribs, but permanent to resolve, permanent one less resolve. So the flail reach got a resolve, and our monk lost. That's all right. Ooh, we got 42 food, very nice. That's probably not gonna sell for much. No, but it's still going to feed our guys. Uh, Shield-wise, yes. Beautiful. Cheap shields. Yeah, we could get these cheap shields as well. 
48 bucks for a helmet that gives you 50 armor? Who can pass that up? We're at like a, a flea market where you're getting so many good sales. We're running out of money though, that's the main problem. Uh, okay, so our monk's unhappy, you can survive. Our cultist got his butt kicked. Uh, with our duelist hammer, I think, yeah, you need to wear a better helmet. So 60, 30, but wait, that's 30 still? Okay, 40's better. I wouldn't say by much, but it is. Uh, repair that. Now, shields-wise, our amazing barbarians that are still alive need their shields. We'll put them on the outside, protect the guys on the inside. And where are we going to find more shields? Does the armory have shields for a decent price? 129. Oh, that's rough. I think we need to spend the money. Wow, we are wasting way too much money, but I think it's going to be worth it in the long run. Keeping our guys alive, so much more important, because we already lost a Barbarian, and that was rough. I can't think of anything else we desperately need, except that we need to get into a fight. We need to repair everything. You need to fix your ribs, because fatigue is a big problem for you. So we'll quickly fix ourselves up and jump into a fight for next episode. We'll just have to get that ready. Okay, so let's get you guys doing that. Yeah, and we'll stay on the food. Supply caravan. Nice. Everyone's looking a little healthier. Your armor is still not perfectly fixed. And as a starting party of seven, this is a pretty monstrous party. Especially since we're going to be raiding caravans. Okay, so let's head down, find a caravan, and then sit there for next episode. Uh, brigands, eh? Ooh, we could. We could join a brigand fight. Come on, come on, you're too slow. Come on, catch them, catch them, and let us join the fight. I think we'll leave it there, uh, and we'll get a free brigand fight for next episode. Uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the start of the season, and enjoyed us losing a guy already to basically caravans. Which is practically weaker than peasants, as we've d demonstrated. Uh, but, you know, losing a barbarian was pretty rough. But we still have our decent tanky one. Uh, we still have our nice two-handed sword lungs one. Up to 97 skill. But our new additions are actually quite good prospects. I'm interested in this brawler. Definitely interested in seeing how he's going. The Apprentice, I actually have some very high hopes, especially if she loses Drunkard. I think we've got a trend going. We've got the Drunkards that we just don't want to be Drunkards anymore. Uh, the Monks don't have the best prospects. I think they're just little extras on the team. They're not going to do much. Oh, I keep forgetting to name it. This one's going to be the Banner. Uh, this one's going to be the uh, Pole Arm. And this is the Flail Reach. The Cultist, I'm... I think it'll work. In terms of the cultist versus the monks, I think the cultist has the better chance. Especially with Gifted, Backstabber, I think it'll do a lot better with the Brute. The cultist has got a great chance of being okay. But we've got four very strong frontliners that will dominate. And as usual with our seasons, you guys have the ability to jump on in, add a name, please add it to the comments. I didn't add any names this episode because I was sure we were going to lose someone, and I'm glad I didn't name anyone that was just going to instantly die off and waste your waste your nice name on a new person. But we already have a couple names in reserve that are ready for next episode, so please let me know if you guys want to join in on the party. 
name yourself as any of one of these guys. I don't mind switching out their names. They're just basically generated ones. Uh, but please feel free to join in. I would be very happy to have you as any of these characters, even if they don't survive long. <laughs> but yeah, we got a brilliant fight ready for next episode, and we'll see you there. Catches.